Um, before I start, I should apologize about the title. Um, my wife told me last night it sounds very pretentious, so um, it's not meant to be. Um, so my name is Aaron McGrath. I'm the uh, European SMB search advertising lead for Bing Ads. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about three um, different uh, ideas. One is um, the changes that have happened in the digital society over the last number of years. The second is about how companies are reacting to that, companies like uh, Microsoft, but also companies like uh, Google, Amazon and Apple. And then finally, just to talk a little bit about, since I'm from the Bing Ads team, to talk to you a little bit about the Bing Ads platform and why you as marketers or search engine marketers might be interested or should be interested in that platform and delivering some good ROI for you, either your, your advertisers um, or your business, your own business. So just a little bit from the start about Microsoft. I think at Microsoft, we've always, always prided ourselves on being at the forefront of technology. So really it's part of our mission is to be out there creating and developing innovative new services and software that have a positive impact on people's lives. And when the company was started by these two very handsome men uh, back in 1975, the goal of the company was a computer on every desk and in every home. Um, and that's a very tangible um, mission statement, really, when you think about it. And to a large extent, it's generally accepted that that was a mission statement that was achieved. Although I wouldn't say that every home in the world has a, has a computer on their desk. Um, but nonetheless, I think in every office, there certainly is a computer on every desk. Um, but what's happened, I think, in the last couple of years, which has been really interesting for a company like Microsoft, is that that's no longer enough as a goal because what we've realized, um, maybe a little bit too late in some cases, but what we've realized is that people are now constantly on the go. This idea of a desk um, is actually um, to totally evolving. Some people don't have a desk anymore. Some people do all their work to a, a tablet or a mobile device and they're constantly on the move. So in response to that significant change, and I think that's probably the biggest change that we've seen in the digital world since Microsoft began in 1975. In, 19, in 2009, uh, Steve Ballmer um, talked about Microsoft's evolving mission. And our new mission was to create experiences that combine the magic of software with the power of internet services across a world of devices. Now, I think for me, I'm a, I'm a pretty analytical guy. I've worked in search for 10 years. And I like the first mission statement. It's very tangible. Everyone's going to have a PC on their desk or in their office. When I look at this, it's kind of like experiences, the magic of software, a world of devices. I kind of think, what really does that mean? And I think before we really get into it or try to understand it, it's important to kind of take a step back and have a think about what has changed in the last number of years and how has this forced companies like, like Microsoft and also companies like Apple, uh, Amazon, and Google as well to dramatically change their business model. And this is where we come to this idea of the digitization of society. So when I started working, like I said, I've been working in the online industry about 10 years. When I started, um, really search was looked at as a gateway, right? You went into a search engine. The most popular search engines at the time were Yahoo, Alta Vista, Google was the rising star. Um, and really what you did, you performed the search for a document. That was really what you, were, what you were chasing. You were chasing some information. And really what that was, at that time, we had a web of documents. So you put in your search term into your search engine. You got back 10 blue links. You clicked on one of those links. And what you got back was hopefully something that helped you be more productive in either your studies or your office uh, workspace. And really what we've seen in the last couple of years is a dramatic change in that world. So the web of documents is only one part now. Um, of this new world. And really, for the web of documents, I think about the web of things. Um, and then I think about the dramatic evolution of social networks in the last number of years. And that has created this web of people. So this interaction that we're having online now through social networks like Twitter and Facebook is really what it's doing. It's creating digital entities of, our physical, peop of physical people on, on this web. So the idea that we're all now transposed onto the web and we have a digital identity. And beyond that, we have what we call um, the web of places. And that's really a dramatic change as well in the last couple of years where we've seen things like Google Places, uh, Bing have just released uh, Bing Places, you have Foursquare, you have Check-in and Twitter. And really what that is doing is, it, again, it's forcing people's physical uh, business places up onto the internet. Um, and really all of these things combined 
uh, the web of things, people and places is ultimately creating what we're calling the web of the world. And really what this is, is a, a digital print of the physical world onto the, into, onto the digital world. So really when you think about it, what we're talking about is a world that exists that is really on the web. Um, and that's a dramatic change and really that's why we're talking about the digitization of society but also why we're talking about things like delivering services uh, and devices through the internet. Really what we're saying is that people are, are having a full, um, full might be <laughs> an exaggeration, but people are having um, this digital life um, that is really totally different to their physical life and on that we ha companies have to find out a way to deliver services to people in this digital existence. So with that, what has kind of driven that? Um, and what's really interesting is there's, there's four specific technology trends that have driven that, created that digitization of society and created that, that web of the world. And the first one is what, what's called the disruption of mobile. And I read a statistic last week and it really made me stop and pause, but in 2009, 0% of the UK accessed the internet through a mobile. In 2013, 57% of web users will access the internet through their mobile. That's more people accessing the internet through mobile than their actual office space. So when you think about the old Microsoft mission statement of putting a PC on every office desk, it's, it's not relevant anymore because this idea of an office desk is, is totally evolving. Um, beyond that, we have what's called, and I, I really struggle with this phrase, so you're going to have to bear with me, the amplification of the web. And really what this is, is we, we used to have an idea that your access to the internet was driven by a browser experience. So you went on, you fired up Chrome, or you fired up Internet Explorer, you put in a URL address, and then that was where you, you carried out your activity. What's happening now when you buy your mobile device or your tablet, tablet device, you download all these apps. So a good example is traveling down here today, rather than go on to TFL to find out where do I get a train to Southampton, I opened up my TFL app, looked into that, and that's where I carried out all my activity. So again, what's happening there is a physical, a digital experience is happening through, this, through these apps. And what we're doing by carrying out all these activities through these apps is creating a bigger digital footprint that exists on this web of the world. And then that brings us on to this idea of big data. And big data is something that I guess scares a lot of people at the moment. So does it, obviously this has been in the press a lot the last couple of months where we have the, the Edward Snowden event and the NSA and all, all that kind of stuff. And to be, to be perfectly honest, I, I can't say I, have, I know enough about it to have a really strong opinion. But what we do know is that by creating this mobile world and creating this amplification of the web, we've created this huge um, the repository of data. And that data never really existed before. And it tells us everything about a particular person. And when you think about companies like Amazon, they're really what I call a really effective big data company. Because what they do is every time you go on to Amazon, you have a next best action. And that next best action is driven by big data. So you've gone on to Amazon, you've bought, I don't know, you've bought an England football jersey for some peculiar reason. Um, <laughs> And, and then the next time you go on it, it's selling you something else and related to maybe it's World Cup tickets, now that you're going to the World Cup and Ireland isn't. Um, not that I'm bitter or anything, but, um, <laughs> but um, you know, so th this idea of big data, I mean, I think it is a scary thing, but it is also something that as marketers we, we need to embrace, right? Because what it does is it allows us to capture um, consumers at the right time to deliver the right advertising to them when it's most important. So really from an advertising and a marketing perspective, we really need to embrace big data. Obviously use that data in the right way, um, but it's, it's such a key component of what we're now talking about in the, this web of the world. And then beyond that, we have the last piece which has really broken down this, this barrier that existed between the physical world and the digital world, and that's natural interaction. So when I think about it, like my son, I have a five-year-old son, and now he's, he's so proficient because um, I'm from Microsoft, he's got a Surface device, not an iPad, right? Um, but he's so proficient on it that it's amazing to watch. And I mean, I think back to when I, when I started using computers, I was actually 18. Um, that shows how old I was. But, um, but you know, it was the, the, the level of competency that he has at five is what we would have called back then an IT professional, right? So, um, 
you know, it, it, it really is dramatic, that breakdown between um, you know, the physical and digital world. And then on top of that, we've got voice control. We've got things like Siri uh, that allows us, even if you don't know how to touch the right app, app or bring up the right um, search query, you're able to talk to the machine and tell them to do, tell them to do what you want to do. So all of these things com combined really create this digital world um, that us as marketers um, really need to embrace and really need to understand how we can deliver the right type of advertising to, our con to consumers in that world. And that's really why we've moved on to a world, um, an era of devices and integrated services. And when you think about it, you've got the four, um, I like the way I made Microsoft pop out at the end. Um, <laughs> You've got the four big, I would say, um, devices and services companies that, are, that currently exist today. Right? You've got Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. And even though they're all playing in the same devices and services uh, ecosystem, and they have been for a while, they're all doing it in very different and interesting ways. So when you think about Apple, it's, it's what, what we would call um, a very closed wall ecosystem. Right? They create their own great devices like iPads and iPods and iPhones. Um, and then they, they produce and market those on their own and they build software that sits on top of that that is really, I wouldn't say only effective, but best utilized on Apple products, right? I mean, if anyone has tried to use iTunes on a PC, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and then at the opposite end of the scale, you've got Google. And Google is all about open source, right? And they have uh, made significant progress in the last couple of years with the Android mobile systems uh, or operating systems. And by doing partnerships with companies like Samsung um, and HTC, you know, Google is really becoming that, key, that big player in, in the devices and services market. The difference between, I would say, um, maybe Microsoft and Google is Google is, and this may be, <laughs> I don't know, should I say this, but all, all, all Google's products and services are free to use, right? Um, because of that open source philosophy. Um, in return, I guess, you, you pay um, by having advertising appear um, during, while you're utilizing those services. And um, Google is pretty open about the fact that it, it retains some of the personal information about you and uses that um, in response to drive better advertising experiences for you. And again, that's back to that idea, the concept of big data. And then you've got Amazon, like I said earlier, which is the big data company. Um, it really is driven by that uh, marketing concept of next best action. Um, but they've also moved into the devices world, which is really interesting with the, the release of Kindle and Kindle, Kindle Fire. Um, and they've also, um, if people have realized this, um, they bought Love Film recently, about six months ago, which I think is a really smart move for Amazon because what they've done is they've put themselves into the, your sitting room now. So previously, Amazon only existed on your tablet device or on your, um, your mobile device or PC. Now, um, if you have a smart TV and you're, um, you, you have that um, Love Film app, what you notice is you watch a movie on Love Film, you go into Amazon the next day, and whatever that movie you watched last night, the next best action is they're promoting that next movie. So what they've done with that, that acquisition is really get themselves into your living room and find out more again about how to market to you more effectively. And then finally, we have Microsoft. Um, and from Microsoft's perspective, I, I kind of see them somewhere in the middle of all these companies, probably in the middle of where Google and, and Apple are, um, in the perspective of um, you can have free services, you, um, which are ad subsidized, a bit like Google, and then you have paid for premium services, which won't show ads. Um, we produce and market our own products, like the Windows Phone, uh, the Surface, um, but we'll also work with companies like Dell, um, to create um, and support our software as we push it into the market. Um, so from my perspective, the good thing about that, and I don't, um, to Andy's point, I don't want to come here today and just be the salesman. So, but for me, the good thing about that is what, it, what Microsoft is doing is providing consumers with choice. Um, you can use the free services, but you pay with ads. You can use the premium services, but you pay with your pocket. Um, again, you can use um, Microsoft produced devices like Surface, or you can use a Dell a PC running Windows 8. So you have that choice, and that's what we're trying to do as a company in Microsoft, is really put the consumer at, every, at everything that we're doing. And we have this phrase in Microsoft at the moment, it's called customer centricity. 
Um, and it's basically everybody in the company has to have has to be working on something which is based on delivering a good customer, a consumer result or a customer result. And that's basically the high line philosophy of that is giving consumers or giving customers choice. So the good thing for me in all this is that I joined Microsoft um, seven years ago when we were launching what was then Microsoft Ad Center. Um, no one really knew what Microsoft Ad Center was. Um, and we were serving ads on MSN Live. And we would have to ring agencies and kind of tell them who we were, and they wouldn't really believe us. Um, and what, what, what's happened in working with, within this company is that we've evolved from uh, Microsoft Ad Center and Live MSN to Bing Ads and Bing as a search engine. And all of the services and devices that have been delivered across um, all of these, uh, across all of the Microsoft products is being powered by Bing. So from my perspective, uh, this is a really exciting time to be in the company. From the perspective of a consumer or a marketer, it's a really exp exciting time, I think, to be in partnership with Microsoft because a lot of the devices and services we're delivering will give you a lot more reach, a lot more audience, and great consumer experiences and great custom advertiser experiences that you can either sell to your um, clients if you're an agency, or you can monetize if you're um, a direct advertiser. So just a little bit about like, what does all that mean. Um, Microsoft is kind of what we call our vertical integration of assets. Um, we really have a nice way of talking. Um, so we've got Office 365 and Outlook, which we call our productivity sets. We've got Xbox Live and MSN, which are our entertainment. And we've got Skype and we've got Yammer. Yammer is, a, again, a social network for businesses and allows you to share best practices across your business. Uh, you've got Windows 8 and SkyDrive from an operating system perspective, and you've got the Yahoo Bing network and Microsoft advertising. And when you look at what is the reach those assets have, it kind of makes you stop the pause for a second. Office 365 has got 1 billion users. Um, Xbox Live has 30 million subscribers and 60 million console sales. And we've got Xbox One coming in Christmas, which is, I believe, going to blow the roof off that, that, those numbers. You've got Skype. 700 million registered users. Windows 8, this is a figure from May. Um, we expect a new figure to come in six days. Um, but we've sold 100 million copies of Windows 8 up to May. Um, and then on the Yahoo Bing network, which is our, our search um, advertising network, we've got 5.6 billion searches a month. So no matter what way you look at it, as a marketer, you need to be looking at the products and services that Microsoft are delivering to make sure that you're capturing these audiences. And this is just a nice way of kind of like graphically showing it. Um, basically, from a device's perspective, we've got Windows 8 uh, on the PC and the tablet. You've got Windows Phone. Uh, you've got the Connect for the Xbox, which now sits into your TV. Um, you've got services like Office and Skype, and all of those services are powered by Bing. And all of those devices and services have got a global footprint. So everything we do at Microsoft now, we're releasing globally. So it used to be a real sore point for anyone who worked in the UK team. The US would release something, and we'd wait two years for the UK release of it. And it would be really painful, because our advertisers and agencies would know about it. Now we have this, um, what's it called, a global development uh, initiative. And that means that everything gets released within six months of the first release. So we're looking at global footprint. And we're looking at unlocking these experiences across, across multiple devices. And all of these experiences are going to be consistent. Again, from a marketing perspective, that's what makes it um, really interesting. So if you see the Windows phone here, um, I won't talk about this too much, but um, you really see, compare this to the Windows 8 experience, it's, it's exactly the same. But you can see that you've got Internet Explorer that you can fire up. You've got your search button, which is hardwired into your um, phone. So when you hit that, it automatically brings up Bing, and Bing will drive your search results. Uh, you've got our Bing homepage. Uh, you've got Bing Vision, which is like scanning for SQR codes. Again, hardwired right onto your, your phone. Uh, we've got Bing Music, which is the equivalent of uh, Shazam. So you hear a song, you're hitting this icon, it brings up the song. You can download that from Xbox, or you can play that song as you, as you hear it. Um, and also, you've got Local Scout, which is really good from the perspective of finding a way around. This is my first time in Southampton, so it helped me this morning. Um, so all of those things, really, when you think about it, is really delivering good services to consumers. And then when we think about Windows 8, 
is things like the Bing search app, um, which is, the, again, when we talked about amplification of the web, it's that app at the top. You've got our search term, which you, um, like I said, the natural user interface, so you swipe this in and you get your search term and that's, that's deliver, that delivers uh, Bing searches. And then you've got Bing powered apps. We've got apps that are on um, weather, um, sports, finance, news and travel. Um, and all of those things, again, are part of your desktop experience on, on the Windows 8 device. And again, consistent with the experience that you get on the Windows phone. What we're talking about here is all these apps are integrated with the other services we delivered. So a Bing Finance app connects right into your Excel, so it can help you with Excel. Bing Maps, um, again, works with Excel. So if you're a sales manager, you can use Bing Maps to identify where, you're, where your sales, where you're going to be, where your sales team are going to be. Image search, obviously, for Word. Uh, Bing News Search, again, for Word. And Bing Dictionary, you can use for uh, Word and Excel. And then again, on the Xbox. So people who have Xbox will know that. Uh, with the Connect, uh, you can now search for Xbox uh, for movies, for TVs and games, and all of them will be delivered by Bing. And again, there'll be an opportunity for, an, for marketers to uh, put, put advertising into this experience as well, when it's appropriate. So just moving quickly on um, to the piece about Bing Ads. So all of those things combined are really telling us that there's a dramatic shift in how we, how we look at digital properties and also how we market them and how we monetize them as marketers. Um, but from a Bing Ads perspective, so when I look at my team and our goals, we really want to deliver to marketers a larger audience, a higher quality audience, a choice of ad formats, better targeting options, and a best-in-class service. So let's talk a little bit about that. So when I started um, seven years ago, we were live in the UK, France, US, Canada, and for some bizarre reason, Singapore. Um, I think we were getting about five clicks a year in Singapore, so um, I don't know why we started there. Um, but now we're, li we're live. In the last 14 months, we've launched another 17 markets. Um, so we're at 22 markets. We have another 16 markets to come. Uh, and we'll be live across five continents and we'll have around 500 million unique searchers. So that's 500 unique searchers um, using that network. So again, um, as a marketer, that's something you need, you need to be conscious of. And specifically about the UK, when we think about the UK, we have 20 million um, unique searchers on the Yahoo Bing network, and 4 million of them are not on Google. So this is one thing I think from a marketing perspective is really important to consider. So, I would never tell anyone who's in search engine marketing to not buy on Google, right? It's, you should, if you're not on Google, you're missing out on a too large an audience. However, if you're not on the Yahoo Bing network, you're missing out on 4 million people who are not on the Google network. So again, from your perspective of delivering um, value to your clients or to your business, you need to be aware of these statistics and make sure that you're um, running campaigns on our network. And these, by the way, are, are not um, made up Microsoft numbers. These are uh, com score numbers. If they were made up Microsoft numbers, they'd be double. So. Um, and then from the perspective of who our searchers are, so talking about a quality audience. So here you see the click-throughs. So on our network, um, we get 6.6% of the people who come to your landing page will click through to your secure page. So again, when we think about secure pages, that's the page you go on to to uh, carry out a transaction, like enter your credit card details. We're not allowed to follow users any further than that. Um, so we don't know whether they actually put in their credit card information, but generally speaking, if you've gone through that journey and you've clicked on buy now, um, most people, the vast majority of people will be buying. Um, you're, so you're 22% more likely to convert than the average UK searcher and you're 25% more likely to convert than Google UK searchers. And again, this is Nielsen net ratings from uh, earlier this year. And then just a, w one more statistic about the quality of the audience. Here you kind of see the buying power, so how much people spend. So you're seeing audiences that are clicking through a lot more, uh, but not only are they coming through a lot more, they're spending a lot more. So the, take the average internet user and assume that they spend 100 pounds. Um, on the Yahoo Bing network, they'll spend 216 pounds. On Google, they'll spend 129. Uh, so on the Yahoo Bing network, they'll spend 116% more than the average internet searcher and 68% more than uh, Google searchers worldwide. So again, kind of when you think about are you delivering the best service for your clients or your business, that's a statistic you need to keep in mind. 
And then something that I th I, I'm personally really proud about is the different type of ad formats that we've delivered in the market in the last nine months. So we were, um, I would say, significantly behind Google in the type of ad formats we were giving marketers. Um, but in the last nine months, we've released uh, site links extensions, which gives you more real estate on the search result page and drives more click-throughs. Uh, on average, about 20% uh, more click-throughs when, you when you've um, in implemented uh, site links. And location extensions, which is really important if you're a local business, uh, because it will have your physical address. Um, and just uh, recently, we've released Click to Call, that's powered by uh, Skype. Um, and again, what that means is that if someone, if you use um, location ad extensions and you have your, your number in that ad, uh, and someone clicks on that ad either through their mobile device or their tablet or PC, you'll only be charged the same price as a click, but you'll have someone actually calling your business. So because, we have, because Skype is now part of Microsoft, we're able to deliver that, that service where you're just saying, that, that click is the same, we'll charge you the same as um, a normal click to your website, but obviously, from my perspective, it's a much more valuable click to a marketer. And then, um, just a few more things around how you, how you can refine your audience. Um, so we've got a lot of information on our users and our advertisers, and that allows you to do um, a lot of great things from a marketing perspective. It allows you to say, I only want to show, I only want people on um, desktops and laptops, or I only want people on um, iOS, or I only want people on Windows phones. Um, and this is really important if you think about the products or services that you're selling. So some products or services are really, really, um, I would say, suitable for mobile devices. Um, gambling is one of them. Um, people gamble a lot on their mobile devices. Um, but I would say filling out an insurance form is, is probably not, right? So you might want to say, I don't want people using smartphones um, for searching for my insurance policy, but I do want them if I'm, if I'm Paddy Powers or William Hill. Um, so we, we give you that flexibility as an, as an advertiser or marketer. Um, you can, um, what we call bid boost, uh, based on gender or age. Again, if you're selling a particular type of care that's aimed to the male demographic, you might only want to have males between 35 and 49, and uh, that's the Mercedes apparently. Um, so again, that flexibility allows you to say, I want to show everyone this ad, but when this target audience are there, I want to bid a little bit more to ensure that I'm in the first position and ca I'm capturing that audience. Again, you can use it by time of day. Uh, people book holidays a lot on Mondays because they're um, not happy with the, how things are going. So again, you, know, you might want to say, on Mondays, I want a bid boost. Um, on Thursdays, maybe it's a local B&B because people might be doing, going out, getting away for the weekend. Uh, again, that flexibility is all yours to utilize. And again, you can do uh, target by location. So you can, like I said, we're on five continents, uh, 500 million users. You can say, I only want people in Newcastle um, or Southampton, um, or I want everyone across Europe because my services are delivered all across Europe. So again, that, that flexibility is available to you. And then just a little bit about, you know, if you're an agency or an advertiser and you want to get started on Bing Ads, um, and I'll do this really quickly, we've got tools and we've got what we call a managed onboarding experience. Um, and these tools are um, the Google import uh, feature. So you can go into Bing Ads, create an account, press a button that says import my Google campaign that brings across your Google campaign in two minutes and you're done. Uh, no need to download your Excel, re-upload your Excel, move it across, spend half the day trying to figure out why it's not uploading. It's a really simple tool and allows you to move your campaigns across um, really quickly. We've also got a thing called Bing Ads Intelligence, which is a drop-in for Excel. It's great for building keyword lists if you want um, to know what keyword lists uh, you want to create in your account. And we'll tell you, you know, in the next three months, because it's coming up to Christmas, these keywords are going to have a lot more traffic, a lot more click-through, and this is the cost per click that you're going to pay. Uh, you can make a decision then whether you want those keywords or not. Um, and then you can optimize your account as well, just looking at it, and it can tell you, you know, these people on these devices in these regions are using or clicking on these keywords. And you can say, right, well, I'm getting great uh, cost per acquisition on those ones, so I want, want a bit more on that. Um, and also, if you are an agency, uh, you can take my email address and contact me, and we can get you set up. If you're a direct advertiser, you can go right into the platform and set yourself up as well. Also, you can contact me if you want about get, getting set up. Um, 
We've got teams and support uh, centres that, allow, uh, that help with this process. Uh, we also provide insights to agencies. and We provide a thing called Bing Ads Academy, which is happening in London next month, which allows people to get trained on the platform and all our tools and get accredited. So you get your Bing Ads accreditation all in one half of day. You get, you get trained on all our tools. Um, and if you're an agency, you get all this lovely collateral that allows you to go out and pitch to prospective advertisers and say, I did all of this for you, even though we did, um, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, and finally, we um, provide you with sales enablement, which kind of tells you around, you know, from a vertical perspective, if you're in this vertical, this is what you can expect. Um, and it will allow you to, um, you know, show off your accreditation, it will, how, how do you get more efficient with Bing Ads tools, so on and so forth. Um, and also, if you're an agency, and again, um, take my email address is amagrah at microsoft.com. Uh, send me an email address referencing this event. If you're an agency, um, every new account you bring on, we'll give you, if you spend 200, we'll give you 100 back. Um, if you're a direct advertiser, you can automatically go to our platform and you get 30 pounds straight away to allow you to test the network. You don't have to spend anything. You put in the, you get the 30 pounds. You spend, you won't pay us anything until you spend 30 pounds and a penny. Um, so again, that allows you to test the network and see if it's the right, right thing for you. So just getting to the bottom line, this is my last slide. Um, I think the digital society, hopefully everyone gets it, that it's in constant evolution. And as marketers, um, as much as big companies like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, and Apple need to keep ahead of it, as marketers, we all need to keep ahead of it as well. Uh, Microsoft, we believe that we have a strategy that is right for consumers and for advertisers. Uh, we plan to deliver killer devices uh, to your home, uh, to your office, and to the mobile environment. And from my perspective as the Bing Ads person in Europe, uh, through Bing Ads, you can, you can access all of these new audiences uh, through these multiple devices, and we'll help you get started if you want to get started. Yes.